Hey guys, this is Locke. In this video, I'm going to be doing an in-depth review of both Makure and the Legendary Plus Chris. I will also talk a little bit about Aileen as well because, I mean, she is also on a banner up right now. So I'll be covering the three, um, the three units, but I'll mostly be focusing on both of these. So let's start with Makure. Um, I feel like both of these units are actually pretty good, but they are not uh, mandatory to pull units. Um, and I'll cover those reasons why. So first of all, Makure, what makes him so good? Uh, or I should say, what are his strengths? That's a better way of phrasing it than what makes him so good. Uh, but his strengths. So we will start with his um, his passive. It's a, it's a shield that's always going to be active every, and that is refreshed every uh, 10 seconds. You can bring the 10 seconds down by adding cooldown gear. Um, so he might be a unit that you might want to put cooldown gear on if you're using him more as an off tank. But that's not the only way to run him. You can run him as other ways as well. But that is just one way of running him. Um, uh, his first skill, uh, it, it's a single target skill that does, you know, that has 100% chance to stun. Um, but it also grants an additional buff. Now the wording of the buff sounds really weird. Like it says uh, default buff over time. I, I I thought it was like decaying over time or something, but what it actually does is it's, it stays active. Like it's, it's always active. So basically all of his resistances are boosted by some percent. Um, at level 13, that's 14.5%. Um, if you wanna see what the maximum is, I can just uh, take a second to show you at level 20 it will be 21.5%. So he might be um, usable in places where uh, bosses are doing too many, too much debuffs and you don't have 100% coverage to resist whatever the debuff is doing. But it's it's not rec it's not something that I would recommend using that way, but it's just something, you know, uh, to keep in the back of your head if you happen to need it. Like for example, you can pair him with Karen and the two of them have a higher chance to resist status effects than normal. Um, you know, so it's just something to keep in the back of your head, but it's not something that I would use in PvE. In PvP though, it, it does become more useful because in PvP, as I mentioned before, um, three things that I look for in PvP units, buffer removal, some kind of surveillability, and CC. And so this skill uh, is at, is coming in handy for, you know, anti-CC and surveillability. If enemies are always doing CC and he has a higher chance to resist those effects, that's good for, for PvP. Um, uh, you know, so so the, it's, a, it's a pretty good skill, I think, for PvP, not so much for PvE, except situational use. Um, and, and the stun, again, is good for PvP. Uh, it's, again, not so good for PvE because most of the bosses are immune to stun anyway. Um, so that's that skill. Second skill, uh, it deals 356% of attack to all enemies um, and has a 40% chance of stunning and 100% chance of removing buffs from the target. Now, this skill is actually very similar to skills from uh, Eileen. If I level this up to 16, it's actually the exact same modifier. Like it says it's 356%, but if it's level 16 like Eileen, it actually becomes 410%. Um, and it has a 40% chance of stunning similar to Eileen's skills. So this is basically your, your, um, your generic uh, AOE plus CC skill. Uh, it, it's similar to what everyone else has in a, you know, similar percent of damage, similar percent of effect. The good thing about it, however, is that it has a 100% chance to remove buffs from the target. So um, it's situationally, actually it's not situationally, it's, it's, it's very good for PvP because um, a lot of you know, opponents will be using uh, stuff that you want to get rid of, especially the immortal buffs from Spike and now from Chris Plus and uh, also from the rage accessory. So it is a pretty good skill for uh, removing buffs, like buff removal. Um, so you, you kind of have to think of the unit, uh, you know, you, you know, in um, in the context of everything that he has, not just one skill, right? But this is a good skill. Uh, I will compare him to Eileen later on and, and talk about the pluses and minuses and why you might want to consider him over Eileen or why you might not want to. But it is a good skill bec simply because it has that AOE buff removal. It, it's, it, it's a good for PvP for that reason. His third skill, now I, I just mentioned that 410% uh, modifier that's like standard for like everyone at like level 16. So this skill doesn't have an additional benefit. Like it doesn't do uh, any, any kind of CC or something. It doesn't remove buffs and nothing of the sort. So instead it just gives you, it just gets a higher damage modifier. So at level 16, this is going to be higher than, 400, higher than 410. I'll just um, 
go up there just to tell you what it will be at level 16 and 615 so it's like 200 percent higher than uh the other aoe plus cc skills see as you can see it's 410 um so 200 percent higher and on top of that it's a fr fixed critical hit so uh this damage is always going to crit so it's going to be actually doing even more damage than that 500 and sorry that that 610 percent at level 16 because that's what i'm kind of using as a base so it's going to do um especially higher damage um, but it's not really something that's good in my opinion. Um, the reason why I say that is because, again, I've mentioned before in PvP, like just raw damage isn't really what I'm looking for. Um, I would prefer having some kind of control like CC or something. I think that's even better than just raw damage. And since this is an AoE skill, it's actually having lower modifiers than single target skills, right? So uh, this is meant to be used for PvP and it's just meant to be used as a high damage skill um, but it's not, again, it, it's not something that I would prefer. C CC is preferred, but it is it is what it is. Uh, this skill is just there to kind of like nuke enemies. Um, and because of this skill, you can actually get away with using like attack sets instead of using uh, crit set. Uh, I, I will talk about the equipment later on, but um, that's what the skill is meant for. It's like a, it's like a nuking skill. Uh, his ultimate similar mechanics to his to this skill so it has a higher modifier again if you can compare it to eileen um this has 890 percent at level 16. so this skill will instead give you let's just take a look 1335 percent so um this is again another skill that's going to always crit, so it's going to do even higher than that base damage. But as you can see, it's uh, it, it has a higher chance of sorry, it has a higher damage potential even without the crit than skills like this because it doesn't have a secondary effect. It doesn't have uh, any kind of CC. Uh, it's also has uh, it serves as a suppressor for the uh, Celos. Is it Celos? Like the eight man raid, whatever it's called. So um, it's an ad added benefit for that. So, you know, it has PVE uses. Um, but yeah, it's uh, again, I, I, I don't take the ultimate skills too much in PVP, at least not right now anyway, because you don't really have a chance to use the ultimates. So, um, you know, it is what it is. It, it does a lot of damage. You can probably like one shot stuff with it maybe, but um, it's going to be hard to actually get it off in my opinion, because it's an ultimate skill and usually matches don't last that long. So um, that's the skills in a nutshell. Uh, I'm going to talk about his equipment now. I highly recommend the attack set actually, because uh, the attack set over the crit set, because you don't need crit, because two of his skills are actually going to have 100% chance to crit anyway. So the attack skill makes more use of that. Additionally, his passive is also uh, scaling off his attack. So the higher attack he has, the better his passive is. And the passive adds to his availability. And um, the passive actually could be used, you know, multiple times in a PvP fight. It doesn't usually last, I mean, sometimes it only lasts 10 seconds. But if it lasts, you know, anywhere more than 10 seconds, he basically gets a second charge of the um, passive that kicks in. So uh, do I recommend him? I actually don't really recommend him for uh, most players. Um, now, he is good. Like, I've, I mentioned all the good things about him, right? Like, he has buff removal and, you know, uh, he has, uh, like, he has a pretty good kit for PvP. Um, the reason that I don't recommend him is because, um, I think Aileen is just better, uh, overall. Uh, and the reason I think that is because she has three skills that are AOE centric, right? Like all of her skills will do AOE damage and all of them will shock. Um, and it, to me, that's like, that CC is, is just a lot more better than, uh, you know, straight up damage. The one thing that he has over Eileen is that buff removal. So if you're fighting a lot of enemies and you just really need an, another source of buff removal, then um, he's a good choice for that because, you know, because that he has that in his kit. So if you specifically need another unit, another PVP focused unit that has access to buff removal, then you can go for him. But otherwise, in every other situation, I, I think that Eileen is just better. Um, than him uh he has better availability because of his passive but it, i don't think that's enough to not get him like focused down he's not a tank he's not going to be built as a tank he's not going to have like insane defense like the other tanks uh, so i uh you know he, he he is built um like he's directly comparable to eileen and i feel like eileen is just better than him 
So I would, like if you were looking for a PvP character, I would just focus on Eileen instead. Um, as I mentioned, if you really want a buff removal unit is the one reason that I would instead go for Mercure. Um, for PvE, uh, he is good for the, the raid, the eight man raid, because uh, he, only him and the blue mink, which will probably take me a moment to find. Uh, here, those are the only two units that have the suppressor effect for that, you know, the Talos raid. And if, if you're doing Talos until like level 10 right now, like the T10 raids, um, you know that there is a, a spot you can hide behind the boss to evade the suppressor. So you can do that right now, but you know, as you're doing the other raids, um, I'm not sure at what level it, it starts, but at some point you're not going to be able to hide behind the boss. He actually hits everywhere on the map. And so you'll need to bring one of the two, uh, but Ming is, you know, you can bring men, Ming. I've done, um, you know, I, I've done raids with Shane right now, right? Uh, it does get harder as you go on. Like at, you know, if, if you look at the, the, um, the damage potential of the boss, uh, at T10, he only does 14k attack. At T11, he does 30k. So if you're bringing Ming, um, it's it's going to be a bit harder because she is a bit squishier because you know she's blue. She's not a uh, legend, which has higher stats. So you have to invest a bit more in her. You probably have to bring her uh, defense and HP up more than you would uh, for for Mercure. Uh, but it is possible to do it with Ming. I've never seen anyone say that you have to pull him. I've actually seen more of the um, Korean players. I've seen them say that he's not. Uh, needed like he he is he's good but you don't need to he's not a must pull uh, for this raid that's what I've heard other people say I'm not at T15 yet so um, you know and I haven't really invested in in uh, in Ming so I, I I'm going to be a little bit away from actually giving you the feedback from doing it with Ming and saying it's it is possible or it's not but that's what I'm assuming based on the knowledge and information that I have that he's not needed for it but he is good and it'll make life easier if you have him for the uh, eight man raid for everything else though um i don't really recommend him as a pve unit uh he could kind of function as an off tank because of his passive but i would instead just recommend using rachel and everyone has rachel already she also comes with a shield uh the shield is not you know it, it doesn't refresh as often as uh Mercure's does it's uh, the cooldown is much longer but still, like she provides so much more utility. Her passive is good for your whole team. She has two other uh, debuffs um, that are insane for your team, for your main DPS. So I would just recommend using her as an off tank instead of him. Um, and his other skills for PVE, um, you can't really stun the boss. Uh, so, you know, like the CC skills are not really effective against PVE. Um, it, you, they might be good for like, you know, the, the normal stages, like when you're fighting mobs to get to the boss, but usually you are able to, you know, deal with that in other ways. You don't need to pull him just for that, right? Uh, usually when you're, when you're talking about PVE, you're talking about boss fights because those are the insanely hard ones that you need to uh, figure out who to pull for and optimize to take advantage of that. So um, I don't really recommend him for PVE aside from the T8 raid. Uh, and uh, yeah, that, that's my review on him. Um, I hope it gives you a, a pretty good idea of if you want to pull for him or not. Uh, for me, I mean, uh, I, I will get to my, my pulling story later on. There's a bit to say and actually even why I ended up with Chris because I actually don't recommend most people pull for him and I'll, I'll get into the reasons why I, I say that and I'll tell you at the end of it all why I personally pulled for both of these guys. So. Moving on, um, I, I will not talk about Chris. Uh, we will start with his passive. I think his passive is even better than Spike's because Spike's passive gives him um, immortality and then it gives him attack and attack speed. Whereas Chris Plus, his passive gives him immortality, increased accuracy and skill cooldown reset. So when the skill cooldown reset happens, he basically gets a second chance of all of these three attacks and his accuracy is increased. So the debuffs that he is going to land on you has a higher chance of actually landing. So, um, and uh, because of his, um, you know, the effect that his debuff applies, it, getting a, a skill cooldown is just insane on him. Uh, like, I think it's a, it's a, 
like he, he it's I'm I'm interested to see how many people use him in um PvP and how the PvP meta changes, how many people are investing him and, and so on and so on. Um I've heard feedback that said that he is not enough to start the instant death meta. There's like another unit that comes out and paired together is when that starts. But I'm still interested to see, you know, what, what people do, how does this uh how does this go on? Uh so I, I will get into the first skill and talk about the instant death uh how it applies. So his first skill, unstoppable. Uh, I've explained that before, so I he can't get disabled while he's casting the skill. Uh, it goes through. He, it's a single target skill and has a 100% chance of applying instant death. So instant death, it, uh, as it says, it, it deals 5% of the target's max HP every 5 seconds over 30 seconds. So it, this is basically going to do 30% of damage. However, if you're able to stack it a second time, like if you already have the instant death debuff on an enemy, and then you get the um, effect applied a second time, that enemy is just KO'd. Um, and this actually removes all other effects. Like if the enemy has a mortality or rage or something, it's actually one way of removing it and killing the target outright. So it has uh, application in today's meta because of, um, you know, what I, you know, I, I mentioned before, like the spike problem is not going away. You know, people might stop using spike, but they're going to replace it with other units that have the similar skill like Chris plus this passive, or they're going to replace it with, um, uh, what's it called, like as the rage accessories that also provide the immortality. So that's not going away. So this is instant death debuff is one way of getting around that and just KOing units if you can stack this uh, debuff twice. Um, so so that's the that's the idea behind the instant death. And as I mentioned before, like because of his passive, w once he uses this once he uses the skill and uh, his passive kicks in, he can use it again right away. So he, it's like he is able to like remove one unit right off the bat as long as he doesn't get CC'd himself, right? So I think you know that's a very interesting mechanic. I'll talk about it later and I'll recommend, and I'll talk about my recommendation for him if you should pull him or not. And we'll get into that all later. I'm just going to focus on the skills right now. Um, so next skill, this skill uh, does uh, AOE damage to all enemies in a line um, ahead of the caster and has a 30% chance of uh, applying the instant death uh, debuff. So this is 30% instead of 100. Um, and then his third skill is also an AOE skill. It's uh, all enemies within a circular range. It's eight meters, usually it's, it's six. Uh, like if you look at all of her skills, it is six meters. So this is an even higher AOE range of eight. And it has a 40% chance of instilling fear and 100% chance of removing buffs. So I mentioned before, uh, uh, removing buffs is uh, a very good skill to have in PvP. He's obviously uh, meant to be a PvP character, um, and this r buff removal is very good. It's insane that they paired the buff removal with a high chance of um, afflicting a pretty uh, crazy debuff on the enemy as well. Like the f fear uh, basically makes them stop attacking, makes them stop using buffs or uh, skills, and they will run away in the opposite direction for seven seconds. In that seven seconds, you can like, you know, kill them uh, unless they have immortality or something. Uh, but even if they did have immortality, you can actually remove that buff and then kill them. <laughs> so it's a pretty pretty powerful skill. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a very powerful skill, especially for PvP and, you know, with this, with his, uh, passive he would get a second cast of it as well so it's a it's he's a really good character for pvp uh and then finally is ultimate um it's an another aoe skill that uh that deals damage in a straight line and has a 60 percent chance of applying instant death now um because it's hard to get uh ultimates off i don't really like the ultimate skill I like um uh I mean, I guess it's okay. He's probably you're probably not going to use him in uh, PVE anyway. So it's if you are able to get this ultimate off, or if you have other stuff on there, yeah, it's a good ultimate. Actually, I changed my mind on that. I think the ultimate is good if you are able to get it off. If you aren't able to get it off, then well, it is what it is, right? Uh, then it doesn't matter if you are not able to get it off because whatever it is, you're not going to be able to get it off. But if you are able to get it off, it is a pretty good skill. Um, Obviously, he's not going to be used in PVE because the instant death mechanic, you can't use it on any of the bosses. So, uh, yeah, it's a pretty good skill. Um, so I've said that, you know, I, I, I've talked about his skills and all of the skills I've talked about. I'm like, yeah, this guy is this is really good. This is a pretty good skill. Like th this is insane for PVP. So why do I not recommend you guys pull for him? Uh, there are two reasons. 
one of the reasons is, and again, I'm a, I'm coming from the perspective of players that are either like dolphins that you know buy the monthly packs or uh, free to play players. Like if you're a whale, yeah, go for him. Like if you are an insane whale that are, that's going to spend a lot of money, I actually can tell you how to get it. You're guaranteed to get him by just uh, buying these packs. You can go to event pack and you just basically buy out all of these packs, like the five of these, the one of this, and the three of this. If you buy all of them, you are able to get enough Moonstone that you can basically guarantee to get him. So if you're a whale, I mean, there's no, you don't have to think about it. You can get him and you can get every other legendary plus unit that's gonna come out because these packs are always gonna be there when new legendary plus units are released. So, um, there's no reason for you to not get him if you're a whale. Uh, so what I'm talking about is actually for the people that have to like budget and you can't get every legendary plus unit. So are you gonna get him? Then the question is, is it worth getting him over a different legendary plus? And that's the angle that I'm coming from. So the first reason why I think that you shouldn't uh, pull for him is because he is, according to Kore the Korean uh, players, he's gonna be added to this reward. So at two million, you get um, Shane plus, and at three million, you get Chris plus. So um, if you're patient enough, you're gonna be getting him for free anyway. So um, in that case, like, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to get him, right? Because as long as you're patient enough, you're gonna be getting him for free anyway. It'll take a while. Like uh, I am at 1.4 um, and like it's it's going by very slowly every day from now on. Like I think I've been at 1.4 for like a week now. So, um, you know, it, it, it's a slow grind, it's, uh, but, uh, it, and for the players that don't spend anything at all, that don't buy map packs or anything, it's an even slower grind, but it will, you will get it eventually. So um, if you want to focus on him or somebody else, I would focus on someone else. And the second reason that I don't recommend players go for him is because uh, he is a PvP character. So if you are trying to uh, you know, do well in PvP, you would get him. But for the Dolphins and the... Uh, you know, the uh, uh, free to play players, even if you have him, you probably have a hard time climbing an arena with just him and everything else staying the constant because, uh, you know, you will eventually hit a roadblock where everyone has like legendary plus pets. Everyone has, um, you know, uh, like all the other uh, legendary plus units, not legendary plus pet, there's only one that has it in the North American server. If you're in Asia, you will get that. But, you know, you'll find other people that have a lot of legendary pets and so on and so on. So, um, uh, you know, it, it's going to be hard to uh, really um, climb with just him. You need a bunch of other stuff as well. And if you are going for a PvP character that is uh, going to help you, you know, go up in arena, there are two other uh, Legendary Plus units that are coming out that are better suited for it. That is uh, Legendary Plus Evan and Legendary Plus Ace. And of the two, I heard that Ace is the best one for uh, PvP and arena. And if you are a free-to-play player, if you are a dolphin player, you're probably only, to, only going to be getting um, a legendary plus unit about once every three to six months. So if you are going to focus on him, or are you going to focus on Evan or Ace? Right, that's the question. And from that lens, I would focus on you know Evan or Ace. I think those are better than him. Uh, so. Again, if you're a whale and you can afford to get everything, go for it. But if you have to make a choice on who to get for PvP, I think those are better units to focus on. If you're making a choice on who to get for PvE, you should go with Cosette, right? Um, and so if you like, you know, if you are focusing on a legendary unit, you want to get a legendary unit, don't pull for them from uh, you know, from this banner unless you are you just want to like really try your luck. You can try your luck and pull from this banner if you want. But really, what you should be doing is pulling from this banner. You should go here and choose the unit that you want, like him, and then you should pull from it. And uh, you can get the currency from it by doing raids, and you can also get the the pull tickets from the Topaz shop. So that's how you should be focusing on your legendary plus units, and that's the reason why I'm saying instead focus on Cosette or when Ace and um, Evan, come out, focus on one of them instead if you if you are a more PvP-oriented free-to-play or dolphin player. So uh, now I'll talk about why I have both of them <laughs> because I just I just said that, you know, you shouldn't, um, you shouldn't really be uh, pulling for them. I don't recommend people pull for them. I recommend people pull for someone else instead. So the reason that I have both of them is, so first of all, I had, um, uh, like I, I really wanted to get Mercure anyway because I wanted to do raids and I wanted to start doing raids uh, faster, so I didn't want to really spend a lot of currency on Ming. And I had about 36,000 of um, 
rubies and I think I had like 12 of those 10 pull tickets. So I had, you know, about, I, I had quite a few uh, of these uh, chances to pull. Like I had, I, had, uh, I, I had, I think like at least three pities to pull, right? So I started with the McCure banner. And when I was on the, like within, I think two pulls or three pulls, I already got him. And so usually, you know, I, I get him much later, but I already got him in like three pulls and I had still had like nine of those 10 pull tickets left. So then I went to this banner because, you know, if I'm getting these pulls, like if I'm getting good pulls right now, um, I have a theory <laughs> that, uh, you know, the way the game is coded is that you get a lot of luck at certain times. And I was like, okay, I got this guy very quickly. Let me try the banner. And so I tried this banner and within like a few pulls, I got a ton of units. Like basically I got six pulls from here, including a second Mercure. Um like six six other legendaries, I mean. And I at, at the pity, at when I reached 140, I actually pulled Chris. So I, so, you know, I, I had 39 or 36,000 rubies. So I used up, you know, 23,000 rubies and 12 of these 10 pull tickets to get seven legendary units, including one legendary plus unit. Uh, like, you know, so I, I told you before, like I, I've done another video of this. I, I said that this is how I believe, you know, I, I believe that there's something in the code that, um, and I, I don't actually believe it. I, th I think there might be <laughs> something in the code. It's not, I, I don't actually fully believe it, but uh, you know, I, I think there's, there's something in the code that is giving you like different portions of luck at different portions of time. I don't think it's just always straight, flat, a linear equation that you always have a 0.07% chance to pull a legendary. I think it's like swayed at some certain times. I, I, it's just based on observation. I can't explain it and I don't have any, um, uh, real like incentive to like prove or disprove it. If you want to take my word for it, take my word for it. If you don't want to take my word for it, don't take my word for it, right? Uh, it's, it's up to you, but I'm just sharing what I think. And so I, you know, when I noticed that, when I noticed that I, I pulled Mercure within like two pulls and then uh, on the Chris Plus banner, I pulled unit after unit like very, very quickly. I, I will actually post screenshots of uh, my pulls, so you can see, like I got six units within like very short amount of time. I wasn't hitting pity at all. Like I was getting like sometimes I would get like two of the units on the same pull, two legendaries. And what are the chances of that? So I, I realized that I think that I, I think according to my theory that now I'm in like a lucky chance, and I'm gonna go until pity because I, I believe that I have a higher chance of getting Chris right now than I would otherwise. So I tried my luck, and I I got it. Uh, I was also prepared to not get my luck like I, I was prepared to get like a second dupe Karen or something at the 140th pull because that could always happen as well I just thought that I had a, a little bit higher chance than normal and so I went for it and it paid off for me this time maybe next time it won't but that's the reason why I have him. I, uh, I I saw that I was getting a lot of units maybe it's just whatever like you know the cosmos or whatever it is like maybe you don't believe in any of this it's just lucky it's just random number generator so it is it's just random number generator i was getting a lot of these units and i ended up with him as well so that's my story um and that's the reason why i have him uh, i'm trying to be practical though and and telling people that you know if you are a free to play player this is what you should be focusing on if you are a dolphin this is what you should be focusing on i don't want to say hey this guy is amazing everyone get him because his skills are all good like i'm trying to be practical and advise you in a way that makes sense for you know hopefully what whatever your budget is right um so that's it for me i'm gonna stop this video and then at the end of the video i'm going to show you the screenshots of like, you know, like, like the chat so you can see, you know, what I got and what time I got and you can see what I, what I kind of mean. Um, and the reason why I decided to keep going until I got Chris. So, uh, and just in case you don't believe me and you think that, oh, I just spent a lot of, uh, money or something. And, um, I, I, I just pulled until I got different packs or something. I can show you, uh, See, I, I, I didn't buy anything. Like I actually haven't spent anything uh, for a while, but that's um that's that's luck, you know? Uh, so I, I don't recommend, like I'm not the kind of player that's going to look at this and say, okay, I need to buy this and spend $500 to get every legendary plus in it. 
that's not me. If I get them by luck, that's probably what I'm going to do. But I will buy the monthly packs. I think those are good value. Um, but anyway, that's it for me. That's it for this video. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. And I hope that uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care now.